Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Android Security Update. My name is Stefan Samoji, and I'm on the Android Platform Security Team. During the next few minutes, I'll be talking about some of the things we've done over the last year since IO 2019, things that are new in Android 11, and what we're thinking about for the coming year. Before we get into any product details, it's important to consider how Android approaches security at the platform level. Android runs on over 2 billion devices worldwide. Some of these are high-end, expensive devices, some are mid-range, and some are low-cost devices. Android security doesn't distinguish between any of these at the platform level. Our goal is to provide security to all Android users. We believe strongly in defense in depth, and our general security philosophy reflects this attitude. Throughout Android, you'll find multiple independent layers of security architecture and mechanisms designed to work together seamlessly to make Android holistically secure. But this isn't enough. It's important to us that we can demonstrate that the security we build is as verifiable as we can make it. Transparency isn't only about open source. It's also about building things like the Android Security Transparency Report, which delivers data about the state of Android security across the ecosystem. We also actively and continuously collaborate with other security teams at Google, who have a wide range of skills and experience, ranging from the Google account system, authentication and authorization, as well as infrastructure security. The Android Security and Privacy team has several focus areas that combine to provide comprehensive security to all Android devices. Application safety engineering protects Android devices from application-based threats. Platform security is dedicated to making sure the underlying Android infrastructure is as secure and resilient as it can be. The Security Assurance team works on our Vulnerability Rewards program and on other ways of assuring the Android platform is as resilient as possible. As we have for many years now, we'd like to share with you an updated set of statistics about how we measure security across Android. In 2019, the total amount awarded to security researchers who submitted vulnerabilities to one of our Vulnerability Rewards programs was 6.5 million US dollars. This is almost twice the $3.4 million that Google awarded in 2018. The Android-specific Vulnerability Rewards program awarded 1.9 million US dollars during 2019. This is up from 2018's 1.7 million. For the first developer preview of Android 11, researchers who submitted a vulnerability between May 7th and June 7th of this year were eligible for a 50% bonus if that vulnerability was new to Android. We made this recording just as we wrapped up this program. After evaluating the submissions, we awarded $16,000 of extra Android 11 bonus on top of the $32,000 that the submitting researchers received under the regular rules. From our perspective, this extra bonus was totally worthwhile. We hope this is true for the researchers as well. Making this bonus available reflects the diligent work that the entire Android team did during Android 11's development. Our confidence that we'd consistently improved Android 11 security and our experience that external security research scrutiny is valuable in making our products even better. At first glance, it would seem logical to quantify exploitation difficulty in a technical unit of measurement, but economics is in many ways an even better measure of a system's vulnerability. How cheap or how expensive is it to compromise an Android device? Broadly speaking, anything that increases the cost to an attacker is a worthwhile risk mitigation. For example, in Pixel 3, we introduced the Google-developed Titan M security processor to protect cryptographic keys, adding a new and formidable layer of defense to both credential storage and overall device integrity. We have such confidence in the Titan M security that it's currently the top prize in the Android Security Rewards program. Submission of a full chain remote code execution exploit with persistence will be rewarded with 1 million US dollars. The Google Play Security Rewards program expanded its scope to any application in the Play Store with over 100 million installs. This program resulted in over $650,000 being awarded during the second half of 2019. Another perspective on the security of Android platforms is third-party pricing for so-called zero days, previously undiscovered vulnerabilities. Mobile Pwn to Own is held during the fourth quarter of every year. If you look at the evolution across 2017, 2018, and 2019, you'll see that exploit pricing has become even between iPhone and Pixel. During the 2018 competition, there were no exploits that successfully compromised a Pixel device. 
none of the exploits that targeted other Android devices in the competition used a security vulnerability within AOSP. Another important measure of a platform's security is how up-to-date devices are from a security patch perspective. At the end of 2018, 336 of the most popular Android devices had 90-day or better security updates. By the end of 2019, that number had grown to 924 device models that have 90-day or better security updates. That is a very good curve for the security of the overall Android ecosystem. The Android platform security team is in the infrastructure business. We're security plumbers. As anyone who's ever built infrastructure knows, making meaningful change rarely happens quickly. This chart shows the percentage of apps that block clear text by default before it's sent over the network. At the end of 2019, 80% of Android apps were encrypting their network traffic by default. If you count only apps targeting Android 9 or higher, that figure increases to 90%. This entire effort began in 2016 with Android 7. From a security perspective, the Android 11 release is all about fit and finish. This year, we focused on making sure the internals, the parts that are often invisible to the user, got plenty of attention. Project Mainline was introduced with Android 10. Its main benefit is to increase the modularity and granularity of platform subsystems within Android. Earlier this year, thanks to Project Mainline, we were able to quickly fix a critical vulnerability in the media decoding subsystem. Android 11 adds new modules and maintains the security properties of existing ones. For example, Conscript, which provides cryptographic primitives, maintained its FIPS validation status in Android 11. Biometrics is the final thing we want to mention in terms of improvements in Android 11, although this one is particularly aimed at developers. We've gotten very clear feedback from our ecosystem partners that our previous taxonomy for the strength of biometric authenticators wasn't clear enough. Starting with Android 11, we're going to use new terminology to make it less confusing for everybody to understand the comparative strengths of various biometric authenticators. From here onward, the strongest class of biometric will be known as class 3, and weaker biometrics will be class 2 and class 1. While at first this seems a somewhat trivial change to even call out, it underscores the importance of attention to detail and security. Something that appears so simple turns out to be quite important to our developers and eventually our users, who are the real beneficiaries of strong authentication technologies. And that covers it for the new security features in Android 11 and for this year's Android security update. Thank you very much for listening.